Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to share screenshots and text to all the different social media on Android. We're gonna be working with native Android classes to accomplish this, which is actually how any of the quite expensive native Android assets from the Unity Asset Store do things as well. As you can see, I've already created a simple UI. Basically, you want to have one canvas reserved to sharing stuff, and inside that canvas, you can have anything you like. So, this is the main canvas, and the canvas for sharing, which is canvas share, is currently disabled. And in here, you can have anything you want. And I have a background and a text over there. Then I have another canvas, which contains a button for sharing, and this canvas was active in the beginning, which is this one. The principle of sharing an image is setting the otherwise inactive sharing canvas to be active, like this, and snapping a screenshot of the screen. Then we want the player to be able to choose where he wants to share that screenshot, and finally, after everything is shared and everyone is happy, we hide the sharing canvas again. In order to make this happen, we're gonna create a fairly simple native share script. If you have an experience writing native Android apps or Xamarin Android apps, you're gonna feel at home. However, if you've never even looked at the native Android code before, you don't have to worry, I'm gonna explain everything. So let's create a C-sharp script and call it native share script. In addition to using the namespace Unity Engine, we also want to be using system.io. We want to have a public game object, canvas share object, which is going to reference to our share canvas. And we also want to have a private bool is processing, which is going to be indicating if we are currently processing and sharing the screenshot. So private bool is processing and it's going to be equal to false from the beginning. Now we want to create a public method, which is going to be returning void, and it's going to be for the share button press. So public void share button press. And if we are not already processing a screenshot, so if not is processing, we want to set the sharing canvas to be active. So canvas share object dot set active to true. And now we actually need to execute some code which is going to be sharing the screenshot. And we are going to be using a coroutine because we're going to have to be waiting for a bit in order for the screenshot to be processed. So from this share button press method, we want to start a coroutine and it's going to be named share screenshot. And we are going to write that coroutine in just a little while. So start coroutine and the name is share screenshot. All right, and now let's write that coroutine. So coroutine has to be of return type IE numerator. So IE numerator, and yeah, we do have to be using system.collections for this, because this namespace contains all of the enumeration stuff, at least the IE numerator, which is not generic, obviously. And this coroutine is going to be named share screenshot. And inside here, we want to set the is processing boolean to true. And now we have to wait for the end of the frame because we want the graphics to render. And this is actually why we are writing this as a coroutine and not just as a normal method. So we want to write yield return and we want to return new wait for end of frame. Now we want to capture the screenshot with resolution two times bigger than the actual screen resolution. So the image will be a lot more crisp than it is in the real life. So application dot capture screenshot and we want to pass in a string file name, which is going to be screenshot dot PNG. And we also want to specify the integer super size, which is going to be two. You can obviously put whatever you want in there. Now we want to create a string which is going to hold the destination of the screenshot. So we are going to write string destination and it's going to be equal to path.combine which is why we are using this system.io namespace in here. So path.combine 
and we want to combine the Unity's application persistent data path and screenshot.png, which is the file name of the screenshot. Awesome, and now we want to wait for the screenshot to be actually saved. This is just for good measure because one may never know how long it's gonna take to save the screenshot and to actually capture it and all of that stuff. So yield return a new, wait for seconds real time, and we want to wait for 0.3 seconds. And now we are actually gonna start writing the native Android code. So first up, we need to check if we are not in the Unity editor. And obviously, if you had your game written for iOS as well or for Windows, you would have to check if you are on those platforms or not. So you aren't gonna run the native Android code inside an iOS because that would probably cause your game to crash. So if not application dot is editor, and if it's not, we want to create an Android Java class intent class, and it's going to be equal to new Android Java class, and the string class name is going to be android.content.intent. And I'm going to briefly explain what this actually does in just a little while. And I also want to remind you that the code is available on my website, and you can check it out by clicking on the link in the video description. And we also want to have Android Java object intent object, and it's going to be equal to new Android Java object, and the class name is going to be android.content.intent. And I apologize because this content should be lowercase as well. So what are intents? The dictionary says that an intent means a purpose or intention. Later in this code, we are going to specify what exactly we want to share, and we are going to sort of attach the screenshot to our intent object. When we clearly declare what our intentions are, other apps which support what we want to do are going to offer themselves. This happens by the user being able to choose which app he wants to use for the sharing from a pop-up list. So now we want to call a method on the intent object. So intent object dot call and inside these generic angle brackets we want to specify the return type and it's going to be android java object and we want to call a method set action and we pass in a static field of type string called action sent so the method name is set action and we want to pass in an intent class dot get static and we want to get a string and the name of the string is action sent, all in capitals. Then we want to create an Android Java class, URI class, and the class name is android.net.uri. Now we want to instantiate an URI object. So create new Android Java object, URI object, and it's going to be equal to URI class dot call static. The return type of the method should be Android Java object. And we want to be calling a static method called parse. So the name is parse. And we are passing the screenshot destination into the method. So we want to write string file colon and two forward slashes. And then we want to concatenate the destination string. So destination. Now we want to call methods on the intent object to specify what we intend to do. Because we want to share a screenshot, we specify that we want to add an extra stream and we also pass in the screenshot in the form of previously created URI object. So we are going to call intent object dot call. The return type is going to be Android Java object. The method name is put extra. And the parameter is intent class dot get static string. And the field name is extra stream, all in caps. And we want to pass in an URI object as well. So URI object. Because this URI object now contains the screenshot. Now we can actually copy this method call on the intent object. And we can paste it. And now we want to change this extra stream to be extra text and instead of the URI object we want to pass in a string and for example we want to pass in can you beat my score 
We also want to specify that we intend to share an image. So we are again going to call a method on the intent object. The return type of the method is going to be Android Java object. And the method name is set type. And the parameter is going to be image slash JPEG. Now we want to get the activity which is currently running. So Android Java class and we are going to call this Unity. And it's going to be equal to new Android Java class. And the parameter, the string class name is going to be com dot unity 3 d dot player dot unity player. And the capitalization is really important here. So this is just a class but we want to get the current activity object. So we are going to create an Android Java object and we are going to call it current activity and it's going to be equal to Unity, which is the Android Java class. And we want to get static field of type Android Java object. And the name of the static field is current activity. Now we create a chooser, which is going to let us pick which application we want to use for sharing. We create a chooser passing in our intent object, which we've previously set up to contain all the images and text. And we also want to tell the user what the chooser is going to do. So we are going to create an Android Java object chooser. And it's going to be equal to intent class dot call static. The return type is going to be Android Java object. And the method name is create chooser. We also want to pass in an intent object which actually contains all these things which tell the Android OS what we want to actually do with this intent. And we also want to pass in a string which is going to tell our player what he's about to do. So share your new score, for example. Then we want to show the chooser by calling start activity on the current activity. And we want to pass in our chooser. So current activity dot call and we want to call a method called start activity and we want to pass in the chooser and now we want to yield return new wait for seconds real time and we want to wait for one second just for good measure then we want to wait until the player stops sharing and actually focuses on the game again then we want to deactivate the sharing canvas so each time that the player is not playing the game something else is occupying the screen like when the player is sharing a screenshot, our game is going to be out of focus. We want to create a method called on application focus, which is going to accept one boolean. And that method is automatically called by the unity engine whenever the focus changes. So void on application focus. And on the top of the script, we want to create a private bool is focus, which is also going to be false. And inside this method, we want to set our field is focus to be equal to the focus inside this method, which is a parameter. So uh, is focus is equal to focus. All right. And now here we want to wait until the player is focused. So yield return new wait until. And this accepts a func bool predicate. And we are going to supply this as a lambda. So just uh, two parentheses equals n is greater sign, which is creating a lambda. And we want to pass in its focus. The lambda is here because you can do something more fancy, but we aren't going to be doing that in this tutorial. Lambda is basically a method, discrete method, anonymous method. It's really cool. Then we want to set the canvas share object to be active. So set active to true. And we want to set the is processing field to be false. So yeah, that should be really it for this script. Now all we want to do here is create a manager game object. So create empty and call it manager. And we want to drag the native share script inside this manager. And we are going to assign the canvas share object field and it's going to be equal to the canvas share. So we can test it even inside the editor, but it's obviously not going to be sharing anything. And after all, we have the check for checking if we are currently in the editor. So if we didn't check, it would probably just throw a bunch of errors on us. So share 
and I am again embarrassed because I have again forgotten to set up the button. So we want to drag the manager game object inside here and we want to select the native share script and share button press. So now let's test it again and it should work actually. So it's going to display all right and uh, it should go away. Well, actually it is a problem because I have messed up here. You don't want to have these three lines inside here. Well, basically it doesn't matter on the device, but you cannot test it if you're not on the device. So just for testing purposes, it's not going to break anything, but just for testing, you want to have these three lines starting with the wait until after or outside this if statement, which is checking if we are not in the editor. And whoa, I have a big mistake here because you should be obviously setting the canvas share object to be false because you want to deactivate it. So this is a big mistake. And now when we test it again, it should work even inside the editor. So forgive me for my mistakes, please. But now let's test it again and share and all right, it, it actually works now, which is totally cool. So now let's build it. So file build settings and you want to choose the Android. So, so switch platform to Android. Once that it's switched, we can actually build it. So let's test it inside an emulator and I am using Nox emulator and the link is going to be in the description below and it's awesome. I highly recommend it. So let's launch the game and let's press on share and it's going to try to share our score here. So I have only Facebook Lite and save to drive on this emulator. So that's not totally like awesome. But when we press, for example, save to drive, it's going to be saving to drive. So save. And when I go to drive, you'll be able to see that I have the screenshot. And I am not sure if uh, actually the text is going to be saved as well to the drive. But if you were sharing it to somewhere else, for example, Facebook, which is more typical, you would probably get the text as well. So I hope this tutorial helped you. If it did, give this video a like and also share it. If you have any suggestions for tutorials, be sure to leave a comment. If you don't want to miss any of my new tutorials, subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell button. Also follow me on social media and see you in the next video.